Good morning and welcome to Jolie Farms in Ecuador. Sorry, uh, it's a gray and cloudy day today. It's been raining a little bit, but we're glad to see the rain. Um, won't be able to show you much around the grounds because it's so wet. But we wanted to talk to you today about what you should bring to Ecuador when you come to Ecuador. So um, this is kind of twofold if you're just visiting. Uh, it'll be a little different, uh, but if you're thinking about moving here, and uh, that's going to be the bulk of our conversation today. And I think that um, it's also going to depend on whether or not you want to buy a container to move here with. Um, we're not the container experts. There's plenty of people on like Cuenca High Life who can uh, direct you to the people who handle that. But I can tell you that containers are very expensive. They're uh, somewhere in that $15,000 range at least now or a 40-foot container, um, and most people that we've talked to about it have had negative experience. There's a few people who haven't, but um, a lot of negative experience. Now, um, some of these things are visa-related, and but to expect it to cost at least 15 grand by the time you actually get it in position where you can unload it. For us, we chose to sell everything, not do a container, packed everything we could in four suitcases and headed this away. Yeah, I think though it, the airlines were different then because we could have two uh, bags checked in each and we could have a carry-on each plus a personal bag. So, um, you know, we got to bring a lot in our suitcases. They couldn't weigh more than 50 pounds. Those airline requirements have changed completely. And one of the airlines that's coming here now, American, I mean, it's it, you, you've got to check with the airline because they've gotten really strict on these things. One carry-on, one bag, and your carry-on can only weigh what twenty-five pounds or some ridiculous amount. Yeah, I don't know. We haven't we haven't had to deal with that yet, but but we'll definitely, yeah, take a look. Now it may be worth paying for an extra bag. However, some airlines are just not letting you even bring the extra bag. Period. True. True. All right, so. I think our list is going to really depend a little bit on our personal preference. So you may um, say, well, gee, I don't care about those kind of things. Um, so don't worry about it. Don't, don't worry about bringing them. Come on. Um, but I do think if you're, even if you're visiting here in Ecuador, bring a hat. Bring a hat. <laughs> yeah, the sun is really strong. And um, uh, yeah, you'll get sunburned if you're not careful. <laughs> well, I will say... You can bring a hat, but they have a lot of hats for sale here. They sure do. Ecuador is actually the original makers of the Panama hat. Ecuador was commissioned when they were building the Panama Canal, and they were conditioned, uh, they were um, commissioned? commissioned to uh, make hats for those workers, and they called them the Panama hats because they were for the workers in Panama. So we've got these Panama hat makers all over Ecuador. Um, but definitely, uh, you want to wear a hat here so you kind of get used to the, the harsh sun. Yeah, different times of the year. Usually it's not too bad, but certain times of the year you can um, feel the intensity of the sun differently than uh, in other times of the year. But before we came, one of the things I looked at was sheets. How do sheets fit the bed? And one of the things they told us was um, bring those straps because most of the sheets don't quite fit all the way on the bed. But I found that... Uh, the deep pocket sheets seem to work really well, but the it depends on what type of linens you like. Um, we like typically bamboo or really soft sheets. You don't really get that here as much, or at least we haven't found it. Um, uh, some people get some really good ones, and I think it's just a luck of the draw when you when you go look at linens. But linens and sheets for your bed are some things that we we bring in. We were in Cuenca um, at a store called uh, Sucasa, and because uh, we'd heard they had good linens, etc. 
So we paid, I don't know, $130, $140 for a pair of king size sheets. And um, yeah, they weren't very good. Um, we've not been able to find any here in the Loja area that, that we like. But I mean, I'm spoiled. I like a really soft sheet. A soft sheet. And here, in, with our climate, we don't want a sheet that's too heavy because then you get too hot. So we're pretty picky about the sheets. Yeah, and the bamboo works good for us. We can buy it on Amazon. Yeah. So we just have one of our good friends, uh, you know, who are coming to visit or are coming to Ecuador. We just have them bring in their suitcase. And uh, so that's a hint. If you're thinking about coming to Ecuador, you should bring something for us. <laughs> yeah. Another thing that you might look at is towels. Um, the linens here the towels are uh, a lot thinner because um, it doesn't heat up as in the day it doesn't dry your towel out. so if you come with real heavy towels I will say they won't dry throughout the day but the lighter weight towels work really good I will say that you know we we haven't really shopped in Quito the big city and we haven't shopped in Guayaquil uh, those larger cities like that we have shopped all over Cuenca um, so there may be some stuff available there that we don't know about. So take this with a grain of salt. But I think the statements that we're about to make are pretty good general statements about what's available here. Um, there are things available on online like at MercadoLibre.com.ec. Um, but again, the quality on sheets, I think, yeah, you're better off on Amazon yeah. or in the U.S., yeah. Well, we try to shop local as much as we can. Um, so we just buy from the U.S. until we can find a replacement here. And we, it's all about finding the right store because um, a lot of the tiendas here are not online. So you can't really do a internet search to say, where can I find this? Um, it's just basically boots on the ground, walking around Loja to, to see what you can find. And... Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not. And, and when you find something that you like, you should buy it. Don't wait because it won't be there when you go back. Again, context is everything. Um, so I'm a person who has a lot of allergies. Uh, guess what? Benadryl is not in Ecuador. So you can't buy it here. We've never found it. We've been told that Ecuador don't, doesn't allow it to be sold. Um, it is bad for your liver if you take a lot of Benadryl. Uh, so we found a, um, a, a substitute here that's much safer for your liver and very, very cheap. Mm. And uh, so we use that when we have the need. So, yeah, things are different. And we've made it almost a challenge to convert over our lifestyle so that we rely on things here more and less trying to bring things in. $10 a pound to ship things here, it's expensive. But quite frankly... Um, we want, to, we want to help the local economy as, mo as best we can. Well, and you've made good friends with the guy at the pharmacy, and he's directed us in really good directions to find good replacements for things. Yeah, Roberto at the pharmacy in uh, Vilcabamba is a great guy and really nice family, lovely, lovely family, and they, he works hard to help us with whatever we might need. Hopefully we don't need too much. This is true. All right, let's talk about pots and pans and stuff like that. Yeah, you have your favorite pans. If you're really attached to them, bring them with you. Um, I found, we've been looking around for different ones. You can, you can buy pots and pans everywhere. But if you want a higher quality one, if you want ceramic coated, you know, it, it takes a little more. With that said, I will say this week we went to Loja. And I found a beautifully ceramic coated frying pan and it's working out really well for only $17. But it may not last forever, but we'll baby it along, take care of it. Yeah, and we use our pans like several times a day. So, um, you know, the brand name of the pan that Lisa just bought is called Warren House, W A R E N H A U S, mm -hmm. Warren House, Warren House. And so uh, it looks to be really good. It's all white ceramic. We bought the uh, red ceramic pans here in Ecuador. Um, we bought some real nice uh, ceramic coated um, pots uh, for the stove. I don't know well, we got the this. Dutch oven in. We uh, got the Dutch oven at Tucasa in Cuenca. Cuenca, and that's a real nice Dutch oven. 
Um, mm -hmm. I didn't find a Dutch oven anywhere in Aloha. No. And fortunately, I had a friend was at Sukasa and called me and said, hey, they got a Dutch oven here. You want it? And I said, yeah. Friends yeah. are good to have, by the way. So, yeah. yeah, I think there's some things, you know, if, if you're really attached to something, if you're a baker, gosh, Lisa has these wonderful heavy-duty cookie sheets she bought years ago on Amazon or somewhere, and uh, we brought those in our suitcase. We brought those. And we're glad we did. We are. I mean, are. they have cookie sheets here, don't get me wrong, but you're not going to find that stainless steel, you know, 14-gauge, really heavy-duty kind of stuff. Well, you may find We haven't found it yet. We haven't found you it yet. You may find it, but, yeah, it, it takes a lot of looking, which is not a bad thing. That means you get to explore the different cities. Um, you, you go in Aloha, and you walk in every single store that looks of interest, and, and some that don't because they have an amazing amount of stuff packed in each little tienda. Yeah, we have kind of a game we play with our friends. Hey, we found a new store, so... It's exciting to tell each other about new stores. Um, so, yeah, one of the things we haven't been able to find here is, you know, the, just the aluminum pie pans. Uh, they're disposable, basically. Uh, those I haven't found here. We haven't been able to find no, those. No, they do make um, a lot of disposable type um, dishes for, like, leftovers and, I guess, selling food to go, that type of thing. But then other things they don't have. A, a pie dish in general here you don't really see there's a lot of tort dishes and straight-sided pans, but not a true traditional pie dish. But, you know, every time we go shopping, they're bringing in more stuff. So a lot has changed since we got here. A lot of the stores in Loja have expanded, and they're carrying more stuff. So it just depends. And by the way, if you're listening to this and you're in Ecuador and you know where we can find these things, Please reach out to us. Leave a comment. So we we like to help each other down here. True. True. So this one applies to me, the next one on our list. Yes. If you're a shoe size um, larger than, say, 10 uh, in men's, uh, you probably want to bring shoes with you. I am a 13 plus, but I'm a very narrow foot. So I have to order my shoes and have them shipped in or buy them whenever we go to the U.S., which hasn't been, that's been at least four years. Yeah. So, yeah, I have to bring in my own shoes. And also, my clothes are very hard. I'm very tall, but I'm slim-waisted. So, um, you know, I have to buy my Wrangler jeans on Amazon and have them shipped in or brought in by a friend. So, uh, yeah, I think, you know, if you've got the same problem I do, um, unusual sizes, Understand Ecuadorians, as for the most part, as a general rule, are short. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they're like five foot five, um, and they're very small feet. So they always, I see them look at my feet when I walk around Loja. And if I start to walk in the shoe store, the, the people working in the shoe store will go, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, not in here. <laughs> it's almost like they're allergic to me. True. It's, it's really funny to, to watch them when you walk in and, Ask them if they have large shoe sizes. No. Now, I have no problems getting shoes here. So you just, you know, it depends on if you're within the range of what they what they sell. And they're going to sell mostly Ecuadorian sizes because that's who's here. Now, I will say we do have a pay less shoe store in Loja. And uh, they do the, you know, buy one at regular price, get the other one at half off. Um, so they usually have size 13s. Uh, not very many. Uh, you can choose black or brown, <laughs> typically. But Lisa and I were in there a couple of weeks ago, and they have a leather um, house slipper that I really like. And so they didn't have them in size 13. And so I asked the girl about it, and she says, I'll, I'll have them for you in a couple of days. You want two pair? And I said, yeah, sure, why not? So, you know, two pair and about 70 bucks later, uh, you know, two days, she called me, said, I've got yeah. them. So 70 bucks for two pair, and now I've got an extra pair. So, you know, it is available. It's just a more limited selection for us tall and bigfoot guys. <laughs> yeah. Okay, this is kind of right up your alley. Certain spices. Spices, uh, which we've said before, you kind of, um, sometimes you can find them. Sometimes you can't. Uh, if you find them, go ahead and stock up. Um if you can't find them, 
see what you can do to grow them and dehydrate them and then you have them. Uh, but there are some spices that aren't always here. Sometimes they are, sometimes they aren't. Um, I had a friend one time and she would go to the store and if she saw them, she would buy everything on the shelf. And I always thought, well, that's kind of mean because <laughs> then the next person that walks by can't get any. Um, but in a sense, she's stocking up. That's her way of stocking up. And uh, the next time you go, they probably, I, some stuff I think they buy maybe once a year. And it's like, if it sells too fast, we'll wait a year before we buy it again. I'm not quite sure the, the reasoning behind it. But uh, here in Loja and, and Vilcabamba, um, you change your way of cooking to accommodate the uh, produce and the spices that are available. Yeah, and I think that's a, a good point is to try to use what is available and change your recipe a bit. But i give you an example. Smoked paprika. Um, you're not going to find that here. So that's an Amazon product. And uh, so you might as well just uh, get it there and bring it with you. Um, you know, I, I will say that Super Maxi in Loja, you know, which is a big um, uh, store like an HEB or Piggly Wiggly, whatever you want to call it, um, they did not have the Brew Right coffee filters. And so it was a while, and one day they were available, and I saw they had a whole bunch of packages, a very top shelf. So I grabbed about six packages, and I felt kind of bad about grabbing that many, and I brought them home. But it was a good thing, because they didn't have them for almost a year after that. Yeah. And then now, that seems like finally, after three or four years, they have a really good supply in there all the time with those. So it, it takes them a little while to catch on that this is a, a product they should have on the reorder list. All right, so electronics. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of discussion about this. Um, electronics are expensive here. And some people believe that they're not as high a quality here in Ecuador. Um, I just bought a desktop computer here in Loja. Um, I will say that I, I could have got one cheaper on Amazon, had somebody bring it in, but I would have paid, you know, a lot to have that done. But, um, you know, for maybe $100, $150 difference, I got one here. It all works fine for me. You know, I got 16 megabytes of RAM on it. I got a solid state hard drive that's, you know, a couple terabytes, something like that. Little monitor, all that stuff. So um, there's a lot of computer stores here. You can order online at Mercado Libre. Um, so that is available. But I will say that phones and tablets and things like that, we have bought those here. We have. Um, the phone we're recording on right now is a Poco F3. Mm -hmm. You know, 300 bucks and it works. Yeah. Lisa got uh, her mom a Samsung tablet, A7, mm -hmm. I think, um, you know, yeah. under $300 here. Mm -hmm. um, works great. Um, Lisa's got one too. So I think, um, yeah, it's available here. Uh, may not be good quality. If you're coming though, there are some rules about how much you can bring. And I think you're limited to two laptops, you know, maybe two tablets and two cell phones. Separate Any, them. Yeah, separate them in different luggage if you can. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so they if you bring try to bring more than that, they're going to stop you and make you pay the 30% import fee on them. The main thing is they don't, if, if they find you bringing stuff in in large quantities, they're going to assume you're bringing it in for resale. And if you're bringing it in for resale, they'll tax you differently on it. Yes, and, and actually you're supposed to have an importer permit. If you do that, an importer's license. Yeah. So, yeah, um, you know, we packed, um, we actually had three laptops in our suitcases. We had four tablets, four tablets, yeah. maybe three cell phones. So we yeah. had a lot in our suitcases and we, we did fine. But we actually had a problem in the U.S. Yes. Getting into the airport in Austin. And that was when the guy uh, suggested to us we put them in all different suitcases. Right. Uh, so the same thing with household appliances. Um, I think that, um, you know, a lot of people have told me here that we get the seconds from China. I don't know if that's true, but it's possible. I will say this. if, For instance, if you want a refrigerator here, they're available everywhere. Um, however, if you want a side-by-side -side with the water and ice in the door and all of that, um, those are two to 3000 bucks each here. So if you're going to bring a container maybe bring a good refrigerator and a dishwasher 
Um, you won't find many dishwashers here. We use a dishwasher here because we have to wash jars that are reused and we want to make sure that they're sterilized. Um, and the dishwasher is a great simple way to do that. I will say that the dishwasher we bought is lacking and is not very good design on it. But Well, and the other thing that you need to know with all this that we're telling you, most houses come furnished. They have some furniture, they have um, some pots and pans, and they have whatever the previous people brought with them. Um, ours had a, a nice side-by-side -side refrigerator. It's probably a good hundred years old. Um, it has a dishwasher that came with the house. So a lot of houses have all these things already. So you kind of need to know what you have before you bring it. Now, if you just want to bring your own appliances, that's fine. You can always swap them out and you can sell the ones that come in the house that you're, that you uh, purchase. And you don't, you don't have to make a decision on the container right away. You have up to a year, uh, was the last law I heard, they may have changed it, but up to a year to bring in a container for no tax. You can still bring in a container later, just you're going to get taxed 30% on everything inside of it, which would make it not worthwhile. Um, so yeah, you know, TVs here are fairly cheap. Um, I think we spent $500 on a big screen TV. Um, yeah, all that stuff's available here. Lots of different brands and, you know, you may not get the same quality you could in, say, the U.S. or, but I don't know. I, you know, it meets our needs. We're, we're pretty happy with it. Yeah. Um, let's, oh, flashlights. So they have flashlights here everywhere. Um, but we have a couple of great flashlights that were given to us. They're super bright, high-powered ones that use a 3.7 volt batteries. So if you're thinking about bringing a flashlight, bring extra rechargeable 3.7 volt batteries with the charger. And I think you'll be much happier. Um, I tried to order some rechargeable batteries from Mercado Libre, and they're a tiny bit shorter than the typical 3.7 volt, and they won't work. It's a different... We didn't read the in the description well enough, I think, because it doesn't look like a battery. It's just like a, I don't know what it is. Don't know what it is. But anyway, <laughs> we ordered the wrong work. thing. But I would say, yeah, there's, you know, Surefire and some of those brands have great flashlights in the U.S. And uh, bring those with you, I think, is a good item to bring. Well, and I will say that at the hardware store here, they sell um, standard rechargeable batteries and they sell the chargers um, so you can get that but you're only looking at standard batteries not lithium type batteries yeah I think too um, you know I sold all of my tools and um, and I had a lot of different power tools hand tools you name it sold all that and the, the hand tools and stuff here just not great I mean um, you know, we have a brand called Prudel here and, I don't know, some other off-brands. They do sell a lot of Stanley uh, name brand tools here. But for the most part, the hand tools are, eh, they're kind of expensive. Um, the um, power drill, they got all the Dewalt stuff here you want to buy. I don't think you're probably going to get as good a quality as you could get um, in the U.S. Um, and... You know, the warranty, well, if you bring stuff in the U.S., you're probably not going to be able to get it warrantied here. But, but again, look at the country. So this is not a country that utilizes um, high-powered tool-type things that much. I mean, the main tools is a Beretta and a machete. So um, they grinders. Now, they have pretty good grinders here. Yeah, every, use everybody a uses a grinder, a hand grinder, offset grinder, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. They, they all use those a lot here. You know, they, they cut bricks and tile with them. You know, they do rebar, all that stuff with them. So, yeah, I'm, you know, part of me wishes I had brought more of those tools, but that would have required a, either a container or multiple trips with suitcases. And, you know, your plane tickets are a lot more expensive now than they used to be to Ecuador. Um, our, our final trip from the U.S. to here, I think our Tickets were like two hundred and fifty dollars a piece. No, they were a hundred and fifty a piece. hundred and fifty a piece. It was one way. One but way, yeah. It was great. Now, I mean, a, a round trip ticket's probably going to be a grand a piece. Yeah. 
So I think you got to be um, conscious of that. So um, makeup. Ecuadorians are wild about makeup. And there's a lot of makeup stores here, and that's a big thing. But I think probably if you have some certain brand that you want, yeah, you might want to bring that, bring a little bit extra. Yeah, I would say anything like that. Um, again, most things they ship in if they see a constant need. Even the little um, haircut tienda in town, she sells a lot of variety of stuff. So a lot of stuff you can find. But again, bring what you need for um, for getting you going. And uh, will. Yeah. Bring what you need to get going and and then see if you can find something here that you can replace it with. Because it's all about sourcing things locally. I think you know, the best thing that we did was we looked at this as an adventure. And um, I always call it the pioneering spirit. You know, if you think about the early pioneers in the U.S. going out west, that must have been quite the experience to have to um, find new things to do daily with life with. And so we look at that as an adventure here and, and we say, gee, what can I use locally because I used to use something different in the U.S.? Um, and I think if you look at it that way, you'll be happy here. And uh, if you make this, you know, your own personal game or challenge to find the things that you need. And just be aware, um, you know, a trip to the hardware store here may not net you what you went for. Um, but ultimately, you'll be able to find it. We're, we're getting more and more things here that um, make life easier, the conveniences. I won't say that we're inconvenienced by much here. Um mm -hmm. No, I mean, there's things that every now and then you go, well, I really need this. And uh, I would say before you actually place your order, we take one more trip around Loja, see what we can find, and come home and it's like, okay, we found something that will work just fine and we don't need to order anything. Yeah, be ready to experiment. You know, there's a lot of uh, Americans here that um, are insistent, and I'll just give you an example. Jif peanut butter. Got to have my Jif peanut butter. Well, Super Maxi now carries that. From um, time to time. From time to time. But, you know, there's all natural peanut butter made here locally everywhere. Um, yeah. So, you know, I, I would think that'd be a better option. But I understand if you're married to your Jif peanut butter, you know, you probably will be able to get it here. Yeah. Um, that was funny because when we first came... Um, somebody that was helping us when we moved over here, his one big request was a huge container of Jif Crunchy Peanut Butter. Yeah, so, yeah, we brought him some Jif Crunchy Peanut Butter and a couple of other little strange items that, <laughs> you know, he had the, the hankering for, I should say. Sure. sure. Um, for me, it's the Texas Breakfast Taco. Ah, uh, the yeah. other thing that's actually not on our list, DVDs. If you like DVDs, bring your DVDs with you. That's wonderful. Bring a DVD player because the DVD players here won't play our DVDs from the U.S. Yeah, so bring your DVD player with you. Mm -hmm. hey, we learned that the hard way. Definitely. Well, again, I think these are just a few items that you might consider bringing. You know, uh, if you have your favorite um, organic sunscreen or organic bug spray or something like that that's um, you know you really really like those things are available here mm -hmm. but maybe just till you get your feet on the ground maybe bring it with you um, and just uh, come here and try to live more like an Ecuadorian and not really have to need all of those things that we used to need I think trying to live a life more minimalist here I'm not saying we're minimalists we're not but Trying to live without all of that chunk we used to have to keep up with every day. Well, it's like in the States. Um, every appliance you need in the kitchen, you just keep going and you buy one more, one more, one more, until all your cabinets and countertops are filled with different electronic appliances. Here, I try not to buy stuff because I don't want... Once you sell everything and you're the burden of carrying all that stuff is lifted you don't really want to go back to having 
a house full of things. And so it, it is a simpler way of living and, and looking at how the locals do things to, uh, to meet their needs and how can you adopt some of those local ways. Yeah, and I think learning from the locals about everything is very important. Um, they have something probably more to teach us than we do to teach them about living a life uh, fulfilled, um, as I would say. I would say even with organic gardening, they have tons of organic gardening tips. Of um, And it's not a chemical you go buy. It's something you can make in your kitchen. And for the most part, does pretty well. Yeah. Definitely. Well, I think that's uh, a good start. We may uh, do a follow-up video later on this and add some more items to the list, but that's all we could think of for right now. Many of you have asked questions about it, and so we wanted to kind of answer some of those questions in the form of the video. Keep your questions coming. Thumbs up, like us, subscribe. We hope we, we've earned your, your subscribe today. And if you have suggestions for a future video, please give them to us. So that's all from, from Jolie Farms in Ecuador today.